Nation. I'm your co-host Alison Sampson and of course we have with us Christopher Crossley aka Mr. Crossley so aka The Gentleman and we have with us ourselves here Micaiah Wilson aka Mr. Fit aka Monster Mike the Trainer himself and back with us again for a second week in a row Christian Rodriguez our IT subject matter expert security specialist right inside with us here to chat further with respect to online security how are you going man christopher and christian hey. and mike i have to make sure i get my, I can't get my christmas plus <laughs> that, was a, that was a good that Let's was a see. good group from the 90s you know crisscross yeah i mean jump I hope I just de- I just dated <laughs> myself quite significantly. Yeah, but thank you guys for having me back tonight. Hello everyone, and I'm, I'm happy to continue this conversation. We had a, we had a really good a good conversation last last week, so it's nice to be back. Thank you guys for having me again. Great, great, great. But you know, you know what it is. We had to do our part. We call it right. the Christopher COVID check. So Chris, off to you, man. Yes, all right. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us again. It's another great Tuesday evening. I hope everybody week started off well. Mm-hmm. And as always, we want to do our COVID check-in because, hey, we are human beings all dealing with the pandemic our own way. We know there's been some relaxed um, and some of the restrictions over the last week, you know, our borders opening back up. So things are kind of actually churning in a little bit. So I said, well, as always, let's check in. Guys, how has it been for you for the last week since last week, Tuesday? Hmm. Christian, as the guess, we'll start with you. Oh, <laughs> <that's right. laughs> um, yeah, the, it's it's been all right. Um, the the thing that that I was most looking forward to is the resumption of outdoor exercise activities. So right. that means we I could start back um, hitting the trails with my mountain bike, and um, it's been a last time I rode was could have been Ooh. at least two months since the last time we rode so i'm really looking forward to, to getting back some action on the trails and filming some videos getting getting some content out actually and did a little work this weekend with with my with my co-producer and with the text <laughs> um to, to record a little video session so it is so I have some editing to do so it was it was a good week today was today was sticky but we managed to get through Tomorrow's another day. Oh, man. Cool. Okay, okay. Mike, how has it been for you? Um, it's been an interesting week. Um, you know, with the relaxed measures and the inclusion of other activity again, it's another opening, you know, and some that we have to be careful. Um but it's it's been an interesting, you know, interesting week. Like today today especially really opened my eyes to the state of the country because um coming back home and I was in traffic for an additional 45 minutes because of the line by KFC. Oh, wow. That caused traffic. And I was like, really, people? Really? Really? For chicken? All right. Yep, okay. yep, yep. Okay. We stopped cooking on them. You know, the grocery was, was em- grocery car park was more empty and the KFC car park was I was like, okay. <laughs> this didn't take long to happen. Swap. <laughs> people swap out, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's an interesting week, but a week that made me realize that I'll always have a, a business running, yeah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> that is it, man. Yeah, man. You're, you're right. Uh, uh, this was really a, a crazy couple of days that started off already. Um, but I mean, so far, so good. Like you, I, I saw the line not only at KFC, but um, Starbucks as well. I mean, there's only so much of coffee you could drink. I mean, the line was on the road, turning into the extra foods area, wrapping around, hmm. finally across by... Um, Starbucks there and well KFC line was just as long as well too. Hmm. The fruit man was just standing up there, he had nobody. You know. So <laughs> so you're right. You have um you have so business, lonely. Yeah? And, and and the thing is and, and, and this is my this is my plight right now. We we I believe that we need to open back the salons. I mean I, I need a haircut really badly. Um my barber oh. 
but being deep grief right now, I mean, it's trust only, me, it's only so much I could pack down this through right now, you know. <laughs> it, 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 I'm not even bothering, bro. I'm not even bothering. Yeah, it, 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 has a, it has a life of its own right now. I know if I take off this headphone right now, you're gonna actually see the headphone print on my hair itself, so you know, it's, it's kind of jacked up right now, but yeah. <laughs> hey look all that's in it and thing and you know i just so glad that we have the opportunity that we can come online and as they say conversate yeah conversate. yeah man. yeah 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 well all right well that's that's good to hear and i'm as for me i i i am always glad in last week i actually spoke with a couple of um friends from overseas and i told them i said look it's so good to know that you all are actually still in the land of the living mm-hmm. you know and everybody is still in their own way trying to get back um in terms of business and stuff like that, you know, even one that mentioned that he actually got divorced um, wow. during the last year and stuff. So, you know, so like it, it has been a dynamic that people still getting used to. For me personally, I have used it as a time to basically work on myself inside and out, you know. Um, I'm glad that the some restrictions are, are back up and being able to go outside. Of course, gyms and stuff not open back yet. I need some stores open, definitely. <laughs> There are things I need that I can't get right now, but you know we make do until such time, you know. So yeah, yeah, that's, that's just it for me, you know. But um, I'm glad Christian actually mentioned, you know, he was out and be able to 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 do some content because we're discussing <laughs> social media usage tonight and um, how to continue protecting yourself online. So that's actually a good thing, a good way to start because we we mentioned in the last conversation that we need to. You know, uh, revalue, reevaluate our social media, our relationship with social media, and how yeah. we use it. Right. So let's actually start there. As in, what to you guys? Well, I'll ask Christian first. What does, I mean, the use of social media? Let's, if we think back to when social media was that brand new thing, probably with Facebook. Right, actually, name of Facebook. There would have my been space. my space, my high five, high five. Yeah, yeah. 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 women age, but would have hey, been... hey, hey, what are they doing, boy? What are they doing, <laughs> been boy? Um, <laughs> you know, there would have been these social media platforms budding from since then, right? That some, of course, are no more. So, how has your relationship been, let's say, from that time to now, with where everything is a little more, um, I guess, as it's, it's more mainstream now? Yeah. So, like yourself, I, I would have been around, but not necessarily on the MySpace and High Five. When those things came out, it didn't quite appeal to me. So, like, this is more for um, teenagers or, or persons in, in school. And I, I would have already been gainfully employed. And for me, what I what I use in terms of social, social networking online would have been... Um, MSN Messenger or Hotmail Messenger, Messenger as some people yeah, have Messenger. said. That was my, yeah, yeah. my thing to, for, keep, for keeping in contact. And then when I was away doing my, my postgraduate studies, Facebook came out. And the thing is, because I guess the environment I was in, you had everybody in, on campus and the dorms and so forth. Talk about this Facebook, talk about this Facebook. So, of course, it'll pique your curiosity, and then we got when we finally got onto the platform, and you immediately started looking for your your, your friends within within the university to start sharing information, start sharing pictures. At that time, the, the big thing to do in Facebook is to poke your friends. I don't know if you remember when when that when that first came out, yeah. so poke yeah, poke somebody, right? right. <laughs> and that was that was the big thing, and that people just start it start building up upon that, and when when it opened up. Facebook to the wider public where you didn't need a, a university email address to join. Then you started reaching out for more more friends and building up your network to the, to the point that some people still use the platform for, 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 for social engagement, for um, sharing their life, for want of a better word. Some people share literally everything on on mm-hmm. social media the, oh, yeah. the the ups their downs they, they have a problem with their the significant other or their spouse that goes on their on their status and, their vent. Yeah. and they vent on facebook and and their their other friends online chime in and they they, they add their piece and that kind of stuff and really and truly that 
that's how a lot of people tend to see or use social media for. And in terms of re-evaluating re the relationship, um, honestly, using social media in that way is, is very risky in terms of your, your, your privacy. Because I guess what, what a lot of social media companies do is they, they create a, a digital profile of every single user. And yeah. it, it, it involves what you share because that, that's a, a reflection of your, your, your psychological state. So they, they, they gather that psychological profile in a, in a digital format. And your state of mind is one thing. Your unconscious biases is another thing that, that they develop a profile of. So the videos you tend to like, I don't even need, you don't even need to click sure. like, it's gotten so granular to a point that how long you spend looking at a picture of a video tells them that's a data point for them. If right. you share it is another data point. Um, if, you, if you click from the uh, audio free preview to turn on audio is another data point. Um, and then other groups you subscribe to. So it builds a, a very complex, detailed psychological model, so much so that they could predict um, what you'll be inclined to do next or how you right. will or how you will sway towards or away from a particular point and if we continue to feed the beast that is social media you 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 now have a a very narrow view of the world because what the what the algorithm does it continues you to feed you what you've expressed interest in so right. you, you have a very one-sided view of things. And yeah. to me, what you really should be using platforms such as social media for, what I mean by reevaluating your relationship, it, it really should be one of building community um, to share passions, interests, to get other persons who might be so like-minded to, to come together and, and create a movement. Um, right. It, it could be also be used for for connecting to businesses because sometimes you may want to find something or someone and you you advertise your services online and could connect to other people. So I, I in, in my in my humble view, in my personal view, that you really should place on social media the very minimum it requires to to have a to have an account, and then manage the, I guess, types of connections you make so that they, you would, you would, you would, you would find yourselves being, you would find things being recommended to you that is a, a more <clears throat> valuable in, 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 in terms of, of more valuable to you than what will, I guess, attract a very dis, distracting set of data that 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 your that the algorithm will, will start to recommend um, so that, that that's how I, I I kind of view tend to view the relationship I have and um, and what I do share and what I subscribe to um, I, I'm very deliberate with what I am um, what I share and what I subscribe and 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 use social media in in, in a deliberate way Okay, and I, I like that you actually said that using social media and deliberately because a lot of people, uh, it's it's more of a distraction than a tool for a lot of people. Uh, yeah. um, I I think each platform has its own uh, foundation or use that it can be thing that it can be used for, right? Oh, yes. But people, you know, tend to plug in and absorb quote unquote content and they usually run with it so i mean i will let mike and um and actually alistair share how they they, they have been you know they see the usage of uh, social media how it has been for them over the the the, the, the evolution of it well, i think it's really interesting mm -hmm. to to like we all have different perspectives or different um different ways in which we would have interacted with social media social media over the years Mm -hmm. um, the fun reason which we would have been introduced to it or started on it, 
Mm-hmm. So um, I think I think like the four of us speaking, we believe us add different perspectives on it as well. Because for me, um, I was in school when High Five came out, right? And I mean, it wasn't it was something very unusual to people because people wasn't at that age you weren't accustomed to it at that point. It was very new and very strange to us. Yes, we had done little chatting and chatting and stuff like that, but this was. You can upload a photo, you can do it, like have a profile of yourself online and it was crazy. And, you know, thinking about that and thinking about the generation that happens now, they were born into that. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, digital, right? So them, yes, digital native. Yeah, mm-hmm. so to them, like, a Facebook account is life. That is, like, just part of what a human needs to have. <laughs> you know what I mean? Whereas, <laughs> yeah. for me, yeah. it was, like, something that you got when you had a computer to begin with. Right? <laughs> You know, so like, it, 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 I think as we, as the generations go by, their perspective on what social media is has definitely changed. You know, so like how Christopher has spoken about the, the, the initial phase of Facebook being for universities to connect. Yep. There are kids today who don't know about that, who never heard that story yeah, before. Never, yeah. You understand? They think it's to share, um, um, let's wait, let's, Videos, pictures. Videos and pictures and mm-hmm. tell the business and complain about a man, complain mm-hmm. about a friend man, their woman, they were yes, tell the self to Gary. You know, all these different things. And for me, I think I began um when I was working um corporately, I think that's when I really began to see the dangers of misusing um social media. Because I remember we had an interview and we had a list of about 11 people that were shortlisted for the job. Mm-hmm. And um, I had to go and do the final the interview with the management team. And I said, I said you know what, the minutes, I just say, let me check these names on Facebook. Right? <laughs> you want to get an idea of who you're dealing with. Because at that point in time, our HR manager was a bit on the, the, the older side. Right. And was not computer savvy, right? Mm-hmm. So I just did a quick check, and there were seven people out of the eleven that were taken off the shortlist. Mm. Wow! Mm. One because they had a post about their last job while they were still working there. By talking, it most likely. That re- right. real bad, real mm-hmm. bad, and talking yeah. the company business and yeah. And I was Something like, never do. Hmm, interesting. Yeah. And then it was so funny that after that. I went for a job interview somewhere and the woman began speaking about stuff that I didn't put on my resume. And I was like, yeah. and then I realized what she's referring to was on my social media. Mm-hmm. And they began to make me realize how dangerous misusing social media could be to your career as well. Correct. Right. Because we mentioned last week that things you, you get post Google. or say, yeah, things yeah. you put up, you can't, you have, after you, you release it into the environment there, it's no longer really just yours. It's not the world's property to look at. Correct. You know, and they could see it, they could keep it there, and you might post something, like we said last week, of a particular mindset, based on a particular situation, based on a particular emotion at that particular time. Correct. And then five to six years go by, and they're looking for a job, and they look, they, they, this post comes up, and all of yeah. a sudden, you know, your name of the list. Mm-hmm. You know, so... For me, um, I've started like readjusting how I use social media a lot. Um, but like we said last week, there's a balance between um, creating that culture and having people buy into you if you're selling yourself as a brand and that kind of thing. So there's a, a, a push and pull sometimes where you have to find that sweet spot balance. of what you share, what you don't share. Mm-hmm. Um, and people over the years have been asking me a lot why I don't share like day to day content of me and my wife and that kind of thing. And I'm like, I say, well, I mean, I might like that, but I don't want to like have all that information ever. Mm-hmm. You know, because um, what Chris said earlier was scary. The fact that, you know, these companies are literally building a virtual you, mm-hmm. right? That they could assess and say, okay, this is how you think. Because in my, if I look at all the ads that I've seen recently, they are very, very fine tuned to what I'm definitely looking for right now. You know what I mean? Yep, yep. And it's it's a dangerous thing because we, we we sometimes don't realize how much of ourselves we are giving over to somebody else. Correct. A, pri- a private entity. Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, when you look at um, the social media, and I would even go further back with respect to that, it actually started off with people trading conversations via email. Because email <laughs> would have been the social media back then in the late 90s coming into the 2000s because they didn't have the platforms. Yeah, yeah. They didn't really have the platforms oh. back then. And the, the whole drive behind the social media at the time was really to um, spread people's knowledge and let them know different things all around the world or whatever the case may be. But Correct. it mimics human behavior so much. Human beings yeah. love the comfort zone. And they will always go back to their comfort zone. So what happens True. is that the social media mimics that and you dig deeper within your comfort zone. That is why the same social media where persons may see things about cars and businesses and things, the same social media that a person will use to, to do rallies and, and think that um, storming capital, the capital is a, is a, it was a justified thing to do. Because they, yeah. they went back again into their own communities and started yeah. digging deep within there. And you brought up a good point there with respect to it actually creating a virtual you. Um, I don't know if anybody ever saw anybody ever saw the rebooted Robocop that I had a few years ago. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. Now they had a particular part where they found out his reflect he was hesitating in terms of his movement. And what they did with Robocop, they they did something to speed up the movement but what it really did it was actually the program Placebo. running him but making him think it was his decision his decision and if Correct. you look at that. social media right now when you're thinking you are making a decision in terms of doing something a lot of times is the social media making decisions for you and you thinking, well you have your choice and you doing everything free you, you, are, really you, influenced. Free. Yeah. you are being influenced and mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're so-called making decisions faster, but really and truly, it's the virtual you making the decisions fast, and you think it's you. I know it may yeah, sound yeah. like real matrix, digging into the animatrix kind of thing, but if we really look at how this is, what is happening here, and, and how big data is treating your information right now, it predicts a lot of things. It could predict, especially how it's being used in the US and stuff like now, It'll predict who the person going to vote for just now. It may predict who is the most likely candidate. You don't know how things are. Yeah. are, are I believe, to me, honest, I think it's going down that direction, or maybe it already is in that direction already with respect to the amount of stuff that going in here and and all these things like that. And I have to be careful in terms of what I'm saying now, but, you know. Yeah, because we're using social media for yeah. this for this content, right? <laughs> I, I, would, I, would, I would also give you a, a, a little analogy. Mm -hmm. When... For those of us, if, if we would would have um, attended like un university on a campus, some of us would have may remember they have these free surveys you ask you to fill out mm -hmm. um, or complete to for a particular department, like a psychology department or sociology department, mm -hmm. and they will go around campus and and, and and giving you the option to participate in a survey for uh, a voucher. Or, uh, or something, $10, ten dollars off of, of, of something else. And they would normally take these surveys for either socio sociology research to get the pulse of persons on campus, the pulse of persons from the east part of Trinidad, the south part of Trinidad, a particular topic. Um, or if it's a psychology student, they want to understand how persons may of a particular demographic, age, sex, and so forth, may view a particular topic. Probably. And in those times, you had to do it via paper surveys, and, and it limits how many people you could reach. Now, with these free games on social media, you're doing it at mass scale. You have even more data. So now you have a, a better idea of person's psychological profiles, their views, and, and, you're not, and you're not even doing it at A, based on a survey, but they, 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 they're doing all sorts of different experiments to see how they could engage persons to get them to, I guess, provide more about themselves and, and, and how, they, how they, in their own subjective view of the world they live in. So you, you have 
extremely rich sets of data. And this is and this is just the way we interact. We're not even talking about the information we give away for free, pictures, um, your 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 status updates, your your location profile, your 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 contacts that you sync from your phone, all of that is now being guzzled up and fed right. into into this massive, into this very complex algorithm. And they are building a extremely detailed profile of of you and your unconscious biases and and that could be used in a very dangerous way um against you totally unconscious to to, to your um your your, your awareness uh, yep. and that's that's to me i i, fi I find that is is, is very i would say scary but... I, I would say scary <laughs> Yeah, I don't. Want, I don't want to scare anybody, but is 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 what, and that's what. But that's that's the reality of what is being done. It seems very fun and innocent. Even some of these yeah. um, these these free, aging apps. I have never done that because all they really do Correct. is is training the facial facial recognition algorithm. Correct. So so now they 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 know, what you will look I look like. Based on a particular mm -hmm. type of face, a mm -hmm. particular um, ethnic ethnicity, Correct. They, they know they could feed their algorithms and know how to age a person appropriately and and, and build these these mm -hmm. different types of models. So now it's you, you're basically giving them, allowing them to fine tune their their, their applications entirely for free. Sometimes you would have had to been pay to get that type of data now now you the mm -hmm. people do it for free and it's fun it, it looks like fun but yeah, it, yeah. I mean, there's if, always something behind it yeah i mean if you look at it right now let's i mean let's look at we be talking about snapchat as well you take okay yeah i'm putting this up and putting a lot of these effects on everything it face. it's gonna match your face and let's look even further if you know about um the deep fake technology oh yeah i mean if with that no, especially if it is that you could train your voice to sound like someone else, you could deep fake your face to look like somebody else impersonation. All of these things like that can happen now. And you're you're seeing that happening all in the name of fun. Yeah. That's yep. going on here. I mean, your Snapchat, your TikTok, all of these things like that. And again, I'm not knocking or or, or banging down on the on the items that we have on social media. It's just we need to be able to be mindful of, you know, using it responsibly or at least having any knowledge of the capability of what it has. Correct. And I think Correct. being well informed is, 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 a, is a way for you to make a decision. Because if you could choose to say, well, look, I know all of this, but I'm still going to give away my information. Anyway. That's fine. At least you were informed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At least you were informed. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's, um, it's, you know, you, you made reference to some movies just now. And, I think like normally movies sometimes they pick what's happening in reality sometimes a lot a lot of the time. Um they, they, they chase after what's next, they chase after what's you know currently like a little taboo but still like on people's minds and they might be questioning even things that are currently happening mm -hmm. that needs to be exposed as well. I didn't like I was watching this movie this series and I know most of you may have watched it. Um Slupo, right? Yes, um French, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yes. There was a particular part where the commissioner um, he'd have used his voice from the um, his you know, like we have Sue, Alexa you have, device. Yes. Alexa, yeah. Yeah. Alexa oh, sorry, device. Yes. Sorry, I shouldn't have said that word. All right, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the, word that should not, the word that must not be said. The name she that shall not be named. <laughs> yes. So, like, looking at how that was used. You know, it, it, it makes me question a lot of times, you know, for example, um, you may be trained devices to understand us and I cannot say how much of our information again we're giving out mm -hmm. and how much of our patterns we're, we're, we're leaving out in the open as well. So, for example, um, last probably two weeks ago, I started using the Siri, um, the other chick a bit, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Right, and um, I was using it um, for like the Apple Music and that kind of thing, right? Just trying to see, even for notes and for appointments and stuff, just testing certain things that would happen. Mm -hmm. 
And the first two things that I recognized, number one was uh, when going into my vehicle and connecting my Bluetooth, it will suggest to open up the music playing app as the app that is normally open when connected to this Bluetooth device. Right. And I was like, okay. And then the other day, this is about after two weeks of using um two weeks of using Apple Music. I said, um, I, I called her and I told her, <laughs> um, play me some play me some music. And the words were, here's a selection of music that best suit you. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. And it was a collection of artists that I would usually listen to, styles of songs I'll usually listen to, mm-hmm. things I would have listened to before I got the app as well. Like it was really creepy how specific how and how intuitive it was now. Mm-hmm. You know, like even even songs that I would have shared, like I would have listened to it once. I would have shared with somebody else. Like some of those things were at the top of the list. And I was like, when I looked down, I literally scrolled down to what next, I could pick it next and see what it's up. And it was like legit, I would have created it as a playlist. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was like, it's, okay. We, we teach it patterns and we, we, we give it data. Uh, but what other people don't know is that you actually have the right, if you want, to collect all the data that you shared. Yes. whether it's Facebook, Instagram, whatever. And you could actually give permission to who you want to share it to. So, for example, there's a company um, I do some work with. They are actually um, pioneering being able or giving the power back to people to use their data. And then now if they want to specifically give it to certain brands or companies that they you know, will use, so if it is, you know, you're a, a supporter of a particular brand or sports club or whatever, you could actually now share that dossier package with that particular company. Mm-hmm. So that way you stay in control of your data and you could actually decide, well, hey, right. I need all of this deleted and all of this cleared and they are actually supposed to either decide to give you all and then delete it or you just get rid of everything, hmm. right? But a lot of people don't, I don't think they think about that um because they're just living their life right yes so <laughs> in in using social media though we clearly would have seen the there of course of course there's positive usage of it people that use it for business people that yeah. use it for keeping contact with family you know people that actually you know go on they, social media with some intent and they yeah. actually mm-hmm. use it for a, a actual purpose yeah. But we have also seen where the negative effects of social media has occurred. People that would have developed um, depression from using social oh, media. Yes. People that would have developed what they call, um, first of all, with FOMO, fear of missing out. I was like, what? That's a thing? You know, people have developed something called fear of missing out. There are people that don't even look at, let's say, for specifically, Instagram, they don't look at the, the feed anymore. They go online and they just go and look at everybody's IG stories. That's like a highlight reel. Just go through stories. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we've seen where because of this, people's attention span has dwindled oh boy. insanely. We know, and scientists have proven this, we, have, we are now is seven seconds. So we are actually a second shorter than a goldfish, right? <laughs> and a goldfish is the, is the one animal known for the shortest attention span and they're now saying that it's human beings, right? <laughs> and it's, this is, it is be- and it's because social media has us absorbing these micro or short bits of quote-unquote content. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we can look at it. How have you all seen that usage of social media when it comes to people's attention span and even the way people communicate yeah. being able to hold proper conversations i i i, I want to also just touch on something you 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 mentioned there about um the the the, the social media is the way these these apps are created, it, it, it triggers on our on our pleasure zones. It it, mm-hmm. it, it, it it releases dopamine. So when it is someone right. goes onto social media and it they get a, a, a kind of thrill from it. 
and yeah. that fear of missing out and that type of thing people want to be and it's, it's also an innate part of us we want to be part of of something else besides ourselves we a want to connect we want to share we want to be Correct. part of a community and yeah. they we tend the people go on the social media into that environment looking for that type of connection but it's as much as it's good there is there's also it could be a little poisonous and, and negative mm-hmm. and that's where you see persons um having that that kind of depression because social media gives you a a, a kind of mask of anonymity so things mm-hmm. you would normally not do in in face-to-face social interactions you now have distance between you and the person and you have a lot of keyboard warriors people yes. who are ready to <laughs> Punks and say some of the most negative things, but they would Correct. never say that to you in your face Jeez. because nope. they, they know. Not, they know. Yeah. <laughs> might, they might want to knock them out, or it, it may cause an interaction, right? But those those people tend to use those things to make other people feel bad because they may be feeling bad about themselves, and and they create why some people have. If, if guess, if you yourself. Uh, looking for connection to to feel more connected and part of something, and you encounter the, this kind of, of, of negative behaviors, it, it does lead to persons having depression, cyberbullying. Um, yeah. they, they they feel that if I don't check this app, I'm going to be missing on something, and 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 that's the some of the the, the downsides of social media, which is which is where which is why it's really important where. The, the, the reference we made is to use it with, with intent and purpose. It, yeah. it looks like a lot of fun, and yes, it can be fun, um, but the, the, the things you engage with, what you interact with, um, mm-hmm. is, is important. And you, you should also take some time to, to be away from it so that you don't find yourselves being heavily a- addicted to social media. Yeah, and, away um, from it? People doesn't even want to turn off their phone. Be away <laughs> from it. You know, sometimes you people, it's, it's good to disconnect at, at, at some point in time. It's good to just go outside. Um, listen, people, look, people will go mad. Yeah, just dis- yes. but go, go people phones want to up. <laughs> go outside. <I'm laughs> Apple. People phones want to restart so they can update. People not doing that. <laughs> turn off. Why not sit on your phone? Turn off my phone. Yeah, yeah, off. You know, it, it, asking it, a hard question. I'm not asking a hard question, say. you know, but that's, and that's the thing. As always, it comes down to how you use it, right? Yeah. But we, we have seen these effects. I, I'm telling you, when I look at some people, when they message me and, and I see this, the, the way they, they message, the type of um, speech they use, and I can tell it's from, you know, looking at jargon and abbreviations and all these lingo and stuff. and and okay it's okay if you use it in between but then when you switch to actually doing professional letters and emails yes. you'll find they make the same mistakes because it's practice, practice. Yeah, well, you know because you, you're actually engage exactly you're engaged in that a lot more than your professional side so now when you switch you actually doing the That's same because, thing yeah you know and and That's that switching. is something i tell people a lot even even guys like i actually had a a little um small questionnaire there with some ladies this week and i asked them when guys speak a certain way in chat if it turns them off and they all said yes and that is because once again you've been engaging in so much stuff with social media and talking that that language that you don't switch it off you know and i i want to you know narrow in on the fact that people no longer want to absorb or uh, use it as a tool for not but social media wasn't really a tool for learning but because people are doing it in a way where they're they're using it for their professions yes and we we all heard about how instagram might be going for more um they use more video than picture now and whatnot Mm -hmm. but people still don't want to watch anything over 60 seconds yeah yeah right that's short form content so we're removing people from actually reading, right? There are people you know, who would, would rather just absorb something quick and move on. But the yeah, thing is, yeah, yeah. There's, 
there is no deep dive happening there's no true research happening there's no going back to the source happening oh, it's yeah. like people are removing themselves from that educated or education level to just yeah. wanting to be plugged in and absorb yeah. like you know like in the matrix jack me in and a glitch yeah. and, I know, yeah. and, I, and i know but that yeah. is not the case so how do you all think people can actually try to help um balance that off where it's okay if you're online using social media but at the same time you want to not nominate yourself or dumb yourself down and that is exactly what's happening to a lot yeah. of people mm-hmm. dumb and down of society they... disconnecting is clearly not enough for some people hmm. if my mouth two books i read back in the day is google making us stupid and it's stupid making us google <laughs> <laughs> well, you <laughs> see <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it's really messed up that way in terms of with really so much of knowledge that is out there. People yeah. no longer want to use their brain to retain the knowledge. Instead of say, watch, I will put a bookmark, I will find out when I'm ready find for it. it and, back. And, and, the, and the mindset has been trained like that now. And um, you're seeing even some of the platforms, like for instance, LinkedIn now is different from how it was five years ago. It has changed. To try to adapt to be more social as opposed yeah. to how it has been before. I with hate it to... <laughs> for the record. Because I love LinkedIn. LinkedIn was my professional site to go to. And then this um, this, this influencer person, I don't want to call his name, right? It starts with G and ends with V. But anyhow, <laughs> this dude made an announcement hey you want to do certain things go on linkedin and all the people that would have been on the other platforms absorbing the short twitter and whatever 140 characters or whatever they moved to linkedin yeah. with their same behavior yeah. so you're posting on linkedin yeah. as though it's instagram then right. linkedin fed to the they encourage the linkedin stories right um, like, come on, this is not what this platform is for. This platform yeah. is where you come to actually professionally professional network, networking, where people would actually post articles of research and topics and stuff is long form, so you have to read it, you know. And you saw it, you, it still happens, but it's not as much. Or their algorithm now is actually going to feed you the shorter form content, mm-hmm. as more yeah. people are going to that, which which is upsetting. Um, just a segue from that, you know, twi- um, Twitter, which is already a short form platform, short content platform. They started Twitter Stories, which mm-hmm. made zero sense to me because a short, short, they call, short they form they content, a, a fleet, a fleet or something like that, like right. Post. But but yeah. it, it's already a, a a platform that deals with short form, and you so you're having short form on short form. That didn't make any sense, <laughs> I, and I so I, and I think they stopped it recently. They took it off, but you would have seen that it was literally, it, they're literally encouraging you mm-hmm. to just come on and get that dopamine, get that, 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 that hit of whatever is going on in people's lives in this little quick 30 seconds, 60 seconds space, and that's it. What, it ca- yeah. what happened with it, unfortunately, it has looked like, okay, it have this weed man by this corner across here. <laughs> he has the real strong stuff that when he smoke it, the voice get deep. They have our <laughs> next one here. He will tell you, you see, you see this one I have here? This one, if you take this, you wouldn't worry about light bill, you wouldn't worry about phone bill. So it's kind of like, <laughs> you'd have your different weed men on the different corners right now. And the yeah. unfortunate thing that happened with LinkedIn so crazy. is that the professional workforce is now a number of these younger folks who would have been on, born yes. and the umbilical cord was on Facebook and they hear right. that, okay, this is the platform for the professional, so they bring in those habits into this Intense. platform, and they are now like slowly the the persons are slowly but surely. I should I don't want to Stop call it infiltrating. Yeah, they starting to influence at the new weed man yeah. <laughs> on the side of the road here, and and, and that's and one also, what I'm, what I'm I'm going to say to like, do you guys say that the, that the most at risk population right now? <laughs> For the outcome of the change, the social media and the effect of social media are uh, the younger generation. Mm-hmm. Of course, they are the most at risk. Yeah. If you think, I, if you think, hey guys, think that, think so. 
I would say so they're the ones most are at risk because they they would when you, when you're at a younger age your your perception of risk is is entirely different as you get older mm -hmm. so they they do not see it as as being risky and and the, and the content yeah. and the platform creators are very bright people they they make it fun and, and engaging Addictive. and entertaining and entertaining so mm -hmm. they will not see or find anything wrong in it they they they, they would they would tend to say, "Well, this is great. Mm -hmm. I I yeah. can only see what is what is important to me, and it 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 that what is dangerous and that it it divides us in that Correct. what we having here is dialogue, right? We yeah. somewhere somewhat along the line, we 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 all kind of say the same thing, which which mm -hmm. is because we may, may be like minded. It would be it'll, I guess we're being good to have a different person, a different set of views to to share their perspective." But yeah. when, when when you have too much of one thing is never good, mm -hmm. and they they would they would think about it as well. This is great. I I could only see what's relevant to me, which 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 gives them a, a very skewed view of the world. So they they will not even know that they are being unconsciously programmed in in a particular way, suiting their unknown biases. And, and and that that is a very bad thing because we now would have I only see things in my way. I could never yeah. understand something from another mm -hmm. person's perspective. Mm -hmm. And that will that will create separation as a as opposed to connection. And which is yeah. uh, what the, the, the first intent of what social media was supposed to well, be is supposed to help fun. help bring us together and help us to connect. Mm -hmm. But it, it could unconsciously create uh, unintended consequence of, of be creating being people more fragmented right. and more that's... and more divided and, and that, that's a danger I see in these very curated worlds that we live in in social media. My my social my Facebook feed is entirely different from the Facebook feed that that you will have. We mm -hmm. we have different friends of course but mm -hmm. in terms of what what things make it to your, your news feed is is entirely a different algorithm for for every user that, that right. that's on that platform. True, but I, right. yeah, I just wanted also to, to to give I guess give give a different side of what we're talking about with with, with short attention spans. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, I actually could see short form content having its its, its benefit, right? So, mm -hmm. as a content creator. I I greatly applaud the persons on TikTok. I, I'm not on TikTok <laughs> at all. I, I'm, I'm mm. I guess because I'm I'm old, but <laughs> but I look at how much how creative they could get in 30 seconds, and it blows my mind. I'm like way because creating content myself, I I know how much work it takes to make a three yep. minute video. Yep. The, the the type of planning production editing to do that so when there's somebody yeah. makes this very witty funny 30 second clip and it has everything in 30 seconds an introduction yeah. a middle and an end in 30 seconds is is <laughs> is a fantastic feat of creation that i am inspired by it's like wow how could they do all of that in 30 seconds and it is is is, is, is a different almost the art form in a sense because mm -hmm. it, it takes a lot of planning or thinking how you could compress this into its most basic element and get your message across so yeah. it, it it does have a i guess a, a positive side to it mm -hmm. but again too much of one thing is never good so it, it, you should also have the a balance of, of, of short form, long form content. Mm -hmm. But all we all we're really being fed with now is is a lot of short form, uh, short form content resulting in, in much shorter attention spans. We can't look at anything past five minutes. Right. Yeah, correct. Mm -hmm. No, we, we need we need to I actually agree with you there. Um but I do I do think we need to define what creativity is. <laughs> because <laughs> some of these people you know, we, I I, always, I often say we like to make stupid people famous, um, <laughs> and these these platforms tend to do that. 
However, I do agree that they are able to create these videos and most of the times on their phone, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. On the fly. So they have that that um that eye for it, that creative click for it. However, yeah. if my, not however, the thing is I would love to see it put towards something a little more productive. It's all good to have fun. It's all good to do these things to showcase if that's what you want to do, showcase right. your 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 skill set in that way. Right. But when it's always geared towards <laughs> something foolish, I'm calling what it is. A lot of them yeah. do a lot of nonsense. All right, they just all having fun. All right, all for but the attention. We can take that and actually do something that is productive because the problem is we have been up, we have been making it seem that do if you're an online that to be successful you need to be online of uh, influencer or doing these things mm-hmm. to be part of that and that is not the truth right and i think a lot of them gravitate towards that because of that because they've seen how other influencers would have been doing it before and um and, and, and now, hey, copy that mm-hmm. yeah and they're trying to emulate that to get to that point like up to yes yesterday we was watching this girl um it's something nicole is her name little dark girl and of course you all know what I'm talking about. She she she's not okay. she's she's very she has like seven point one million viewers. And this Whoa. is from her being and this making jokes and doing these little short vids. And wow. the, the, the young lady has her own little network now. Um she's nineteen. Um wow. her net her net worth wow. may be five hundred thousand, but her TV, her YouTube is 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 um monetized between five to seven million. Wow right that she is probably hmm. generating she has her own record single on, re- on 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 rotation right now and she started off making stupid little videos <laughs> and just entertaining people and you know what's scary lucas who is that um there are people out here who has the ability to reach seven point something million people yes yes and when i say which like they, their message can reach that much people Correct. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's on. But but and check it though. But you who might be trying to actually actively do something with purpose, time get ten people to, to check what you're doing. You know what I mean? I mean just look at that. So people who actively actively trying to create some sort of change and impact and yeah. do something substantial, struggling to get that. Yet people that are having a time get that kind of level of influence it's, it's a, a strange it's a you know? society right now yeah it is well, I, don't know people, I don't know people so stressed out they just need to laugh all the time so they, they follow these people Could all be. right you know i i applaud like um this guy kiva and i applaud him because yes he he uses yeah. his stuff for comedy but he also touches on social topics you know yeah. and, and talks about different things so i applaud him for that you know where he actually has that balance right mm-hmm. But people that just usually just use it for fun and just kicks it off and people just following them. And the thing is, they could actually say something and they would get a majority of their followers to actually believe in what they're saying. And yeah. I think there's, that is a scary thing. That, that is a, uh, there's, there's some danger. Very that, scary. Very, right? very scary. And if, if we go back to actually what, what Christian said earlier, with how it fragments and and create certain divisions i don't know if you all saw the documentary where they spoke about and, and trinidad was actually mentioned in that video where they came down and they were like they were doing oh, surveys yes. on the youths in different areas right, and, right, 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 right. and looking to see the direction that they would vote and how they could actually build a campaign you know Around so it. those yeah. dossiers are being formed right here on social media whether it's facebook instagram they're looking at what you're looking at, and then they're actually going to feed you more of those videos to actually direct that that um train of thought that you already started so All when right. it comes time to vote or whatever and have yeah, your, yeah. your uh, opinion on something you already you already fed that that whole thing that it comes like that movie that um will smith was on where he was like a, a pickpocket and there was only feeding the man the number five subconsciously every time focus. everywhere you go. Focus, right? You saw the number yeah. five. So when he asked the man to pick any number on the field, <laughs> he knew what number to call because they were feeding him that letter, that number 
subconsciously, subconsciously and that is, that is exactly time. what they do through social media as well. They see what you're doing, they see what you're posting, they see what you're following, and they they create that content and your news feed because of your algorithm will show you those things that would help guide your exactly, exactly your decision making exactly. process. So these yeah. are the things that happen. And you think and you think you're making your own independent decision yet? Yeah, your no, ticket has been hijacked. No, one of the things that we need to do, and I would advise any per, every person who is online listening to us right now, whether you're listening to us on Facebook, whether you're um, on YouTube, go into a privacy setting on a mobile device that have Facebook or Instagram, as the case may be, and just do an inventory and start mm-hmm. checking to see it actually tracks everything that you have recently searched for and keeps that in storage there. It looks at mm-hmm. that. Yet it also looks at there are certain things that the company changes without your notice and you have to Correct. go on your privacy and setting it. and uncheck Correct. that if it needs to and, so, and, and opt out. Yeah, opt, opt out, out of it. Yeah. Because if all the mind, apps are connected, yeah. All the apps that you're connected to, everything. Yeah. Even if it is that you want to even comb through your time lying on Facebook, yes, it might take a little while based on the stuff that you might How be putting there in the been past. There? But you might want to do some cleanup there. Your your folders that you have your pictures on. You may have friends on Facebook, yes, but you know you could lock down from folders even more. Correct. To say, well, okay, mm-hmm. this is definitely for family members. I want these specific people to see my folder. This folder with my family picture, da da da. All these things like you that. You could comment, to... tag. Yeah, all of these things. So that type of inventory, you need to be able to do that now to protect yourself. It's the privacy setting that you may have signed up initially on Facebook or Instagram or TikTok or whatever case is back then is not the same now. It would have evolved. And they do it without you saying, without your notice. They may say, yeah, you're getting a new update and that's it. You yeah. need to check these things. Go back. Correct. Check your stuff. Go back to your privacy setting. If you need to uncheck stuff, do that if it is that you want to value your privacy. But again, we can tell you this, you can do what you want. We're just giving you the choice yeah. and letting you be aware yeah. that there's an avenue that you can go to to go ahead and do that. And yeah, spend a little half nice. an hour, five minutes, six minutes, go and check that stuff with respect to your privacy setting. I strongly recommend I would that. Say, I would say it's it's a recommended part of digital hygiene. Yes. You, you, should, you should go digital and, hygiene. And, <laughs> period, and periodically prune your... Your, yeah. your your profile yes. look at your settings is this ask yourself is this information that i i want to share and right. and I, I also I, because we, we started to valuing um changing the relationship of our social media platforms is is looking at how does my what is the value of my personal information and mm-hmm. we don't really think about it but these big companies know exactly how much your information is worth but you yeah. don't know what is the value of your information they know exactly how much that information is worth and we give it away freely because to us it's like is is is, is nothing but we, we don't realize how much power we have when we we can still use those services whilst they may be free but but use them in in, in a very i want to you do overuse this in a very deliberate way you only give what is required and still use it don't don't yeah. don't over provide what what, what information is, is is needed and, and again yeah. using it in, in in a fashion which you which helps you achieve your I guess your 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 own objectives, while and are not necessarily the objectives of of, of the companies that are, mm-hmm. that have built the platform. Use it use it as your own way of, of getting your your information your message out, and and, and that's why I think it, that's what is really, in my view, what I think it's more about now, not not necessarily mm-hmm. for. For, for for building friendships it is for building a network yes but a network of i guess similar like-minded people who can be used that you can utilize to 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 create something and and, and it's not just about getting likes and 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 fun yeah. you can mm-hmm. still have fun but if if it's used just in that way um you find yourself 
not yes. using the system, the system end up, ends you up you. using you. Correct. And you Correct. become the product. That is a scary yeah. problem. I, I agree with that too. Digital hygiene. Just like everything else, you should remember to wash behind your ears. Right? <laughs> Stop and take check because, I, I mean, literally, uh, we, we, we use apps so much. We download apps. I know a lot of people download games. In those settings, while you download, they're actually asking you if I could access certain apps, mm -hmm. if I can yep. change your browser, Photos, uh, yep. um, Friends, contacts, all, these, kind of all these different things that aren't necessary. So you do need to spend some time. Um, one show we have, especially with social media, check in that is, as always, with your phone. Go through, see what your apps are connected to, what you allowed it to share and view and, yeah. you know, gather that information from you. And just as we mentioned um, last week, like with um, messages that you get on WhatsApp, you get the same thing like on Instagram and in your inbox on Facebook yes. and stuff. People will send you messages with links. People will send you invites to groups and check out this here, check out that there. You can always tell which one is actual, whether it's a business or a personal message in you, or mm -hmm. if it's what you call a bot, a bot an automated yeah. bot or a fake profile, send you a link. Don't excuse click you right link. now. That is crazy yeah. right now. Just delete. So yeah, the bot thing is is annoying. Um, but you know, this is is that is part of um, com some companies' way of building engagement. They have these bots messaging, so yeah. when people press and they look and stuff, it actually reads the algorithm that they're engaging with 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 people. So it helps yeah. their their engagement. But please do not click from anybody you do not know or is not a you can tell is not a trusted um source or a trusted message and of course the most you can do with social media is if it is you think you have been compromised change your password immediately mm -hmm. all right um sometimes social media platforms will email you the email you would have been registered uh, registered with and they will say hey we notice um the platform being accessed on a new IP address right. or by a new browser or by a new phone device, they will notify you. So that's why it's very important to have that two-factor authentication on yeah. so yes. that you will receive those notifications. So, hey, somebody access your, your IG from an iPad, but you know you are a Samsung person or whatever. No, that's not me. Blank that and one time. And your email clear so you can see any message coming. Correct. Mm -hmm. You know, so you make sure you have these things set because this is... It's, it's not like just changing um, or flushing your browser cache or something like that. It's, it's a little more different when it comes to your profiles on social media. Sometimes people hack it and you honestly will lose it. Sometimes you don't always get it back. Yeah, sometimes it's All hard right? to recover it. It's hard to recover. So sometimes you have to start over whatever profile. But sometimes these things happen so that you could actually now operate with a little more intent. And okay. you know, know exactly how you're actually posting. Um, for some people, however, I've, I've seen them, instead of doing that, they end up having two, three backup profiles to that profile. <laughs> and then they ask people to follow them across all their profiles. And I'm like, um, that's a that's yeah. a bit that's a I bit much. That's a bit much. Yeah, it is like, all right, I'll fit X Studio, but in but just in case I'll fit X Studio two. That's my backup in case this one gets hacked. Uh, and I'm like, wow. You but know, sometimes... So they, even yeah. Yeah, but I guess but it, it, it's yeah, just for to, for the audience that me, that, that, uh, that listening, it's sometimes good to have um, separate profiles based on based on what it is you're doing. So, doing correct. Um, so if, if it is you, you have a, you have a, a channel which, which deals with which with cooking, but then you have another channel which may which I don't need. But you, cooking is just one of your passions, and you build an audience of persons who come to see you cook different meals or, 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 or mm -hmm. sample different foods. But then you don't want to to have your audience mix with somebody who is coming to look at you because do you another passion of yours is. Um, RC cars. They're right. they're two totally distinct audiences. Right. So so having different profiles for for different again intent yeah. specific yeah. purposes is is entirely fine. So 
we, we, we should, because we, again, we're building community, we're building audiences. You don't want to have the persons who come in to listen, to, to hear what you have to say about um, RC cars when you when you want to talk about uh, a, a French, uh, some some sort of French dessert. Some that, nouveau cuisine. Yes, yes that, that you're going to make. They're, you're going to totally lose your audience. You're like, I, I don't need to listen. Let's to not that. talk I, about I, food, guys. Let's not talk about food. <laughs> <laughs> no, we can so talk it's... about food. Once it's not KFC, you know, it's all good. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, so so how, how we, we, we having, having multiple profiles is with the, with the, with the right reasons. The, the, the reason you just spoke about there, Chris, is just to have backup profiles is, is probably not the, the right reason. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not going to make a decision what is right and wrong for another person. Person? But right. it's, it is, is really should, should be viewed in a way that you're, you're, you're creating these different um, rooms where persons could come and, and interact and engage with you based on the, the type of, um, I guess, audience you want to build in, in that sense. Agreed. So true. Agreed. Wow. Well, folks, hey, uh, the conversation, right? That's why we're here. That's right. Um, another packed night as we, we, dove, we dove a little deeper into social media usage, of course. And, you know, the whole idea is we want people to evaluate and reevaluate <laughs> their relationship with social media, how they use it, why they oh, use yeah. it, you know, their, where they want to be with it going forward. Uh, I mean, we can go even deeper in terms of from the business side of you, but that's something completely different. All right, maybe we might address that in the future because we know we have a lot of um, entrepreneurs and business owners that follow the the conversation. So yeah. we may address that later on. But you know, we hope you took some notes tonight. We hope what we shared was informative in some way to you, and and you will actually go back and address your concerns that you may have had with using social media things that you may have seen and not wasn't sure about when it comes to protecting yourself with it and as always if you have questions feel free to inbox us or leave a message in the chat we will do our best to address it all right so as we are about to close off for another uh edition here in the conversation any closing remarks guys um i guess my 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 final statement my closing statements really you besides what we said last week of, of reevaluating your, your relationship with social media we would also want to add to that statement is it should be used with intent and and when when you looking at your relationship think about what what am i trying to derive from this what is my end goal and and if i if i'm building something with with intent and with purpose the the way you use that um that service will will, will greatly be will be greatly different to if it is you're you're going to be using it for um i guess casual, casual. um on un, unintentional use mm -hmm. and, and 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 be also mindful and careful of your own psychological health and and take time away from from social media yeah. that you you don't get addicted to the to the, to the dopamine um hits that you that you receive and from from using you have to take a, a detox at times and and put the phones down and and spend time interacting with the people around you and not, and not, the, the, not your virtual your virtual and social networks Correct. Well, quick question, as you mentioned, that have you guys ever taken, uh, I mean, uh, if you want to say a detox or a detachment from social media, I know I unplugged for a year um, already, and that was like the best feeling ever. Um, mm -hmm. I'll admit that. I, it, I didn't feel like I needed to post. I didn't feel like I needed to connect or engage or have to put something out there. I That was like a very calm year for me, and I actually, because of that, I reassess exactly how I wanted to engage and be on social media, especially Facebook and Instagram, um, most of all. So that digital detox is good. Uh, separate from that, for me, no. What I do is like on, on Sundays, no tech period, unless I use my laptop to watch a movie or just to cast a movie on television or something. But otherwise, unplug. 
I may not respond to a message. I won't be on any social media at all until probably later in the evening when I already had my day. So have you all actually ever done that? Or is that part of your, your routine now to have some time where you disconnect? Yeah. Um, I haven't done it for a year. Like, me and you no know, longer for a whole entire year. I mean, but um, in terms of just doing that switch off, um, actually, I started doing that. I took your advice, Chris, with respect to that. Like, the Sundays, just release yeah. that down. It hard sometimes, you know, you just find yourself trying to yes. grab the phone, but no, just rest it down. Switch it, mm. switch it off, or, you know, at least turn off the notifications at least. Yeah, so at just least, get yeah. The just get these phone calls. It. You know, use this, use it for exactly what it was the original intent, which was you get a yes. call, you answer a call, you make a call. You know, yeah. it's it hard, yeah. but you know, I'll, yeah. I'll give you a, I'll give you a joke with that. I took Facebook and Facebook Messenger off of my phone, and for like the first two weeks, I would actually go to the space where the icon was, as though it was still there. <laughs> subconsciously i would open my phone and actually go to where it was that is exactly how plugged in you are at times to check in these apps i removed it but my body was still going to there. that muscle memory was still <laughs> actually happening that was ridiculous for like two weeks wow yeah mike excuse me i mean i think for me i never really um i haven't done like a, a long period detox um what I kind of do now, and what I would have done before was, um, um, I would have offloaded certain apps at certain periods of time, right? So on, like on the iPhone, you can offload that particular app that it will therefore not, you will get notifications, it will be saved and everything, but you wouldn't get notifications. You can't click it on the you install it, that kind of thing. So I would do that to kind of get myself away from certain things for a while. Um, but even like now, where we have a lot of stuff going on on social media, um because you can't come in advance you then avoid being sucked into that for a long period of time yeah so again is with two little bit intent rather than just be honest and just yeah. stay at the screen for hours Plugged you know mm -hmm. i think that is what else helped us to not fall into that trap of it but um other than that i've never done anything that would take more long period um it talks about right now yeah Correct. um Similar, similar for me. I, 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 as much as I, I, I was, I mentioned talking about disconnecting. I've never disconnected for a long period of time. What I, what I use on, on, I have an iPhone, and what I use on my iPhone, I, I, I track how much t screen time I, I, I spend yes, in yeah. different apps, and if, if I, if I see for a week, I've used. YouTube or Facebook for a long period of time. I try to make a, a, a more conscious effort the following week to to use that that I guess application a little less. So there I guess well, there, there there's no there's never no one way of doing things or, or one specific you could find your own ways of disconnecting. So as as Alistair said he he started adopting the Sunday rule no no devices. Some persons may not be able to to disconnect in, entirely because they use social media as their marketing platform for for business and or, or and stuff like that. Um, but if you can find make, make your own decision of how much of my time and energy am I going to give to to social media and and right. use the use the, use the different tools available to you on on your mobile device to. To, 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 to gradually restrict that and uh, I guess as you say come off the the the, the, um, the needle a little bit that time uh, mm -hmm. you know you're not so addicted to the to that dopamine hit crack social media. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that 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 social media crack trust me <laughs> you know but it's it's all good so so yeah people practice that digital hygiene cleanup all right do some digital detox periodically. It is good for you. <laughs> All right. Especially, especially you know, with, with certain news that continuously on and everything seems to be a little gloom and doom is because gloom you're watching it. True. You're watching it so much, they're going to keep sending you more of that. All Perfect right. So, example. 
Yeah, so you need to unplug a little bit, detach a little bit, all right? So, folks, thank you once again for joining us. For those that are viewing us by YouTube, make sure to please like, subscribe, mm -hmm. share, you know, tell a friend. <laughs> the conversation is happening every Tuesday at 8 p.m. So right after this, you can actually pick us up again for the replay, share it with those that may um, be able to, to get some information from this tonight. And you can also view the other episodes as well. All right, so please, until next week, let's continue to practice social distancing. Make sure you wear your mask. Mm -hmm. Make sure you wash your hands. And hey, if you've decided to take the vaccine, go right ahead. Let's try to keep everybody safe. All right? So thanks again for joining us. And we'll see you again next week. Next week. All right? Thanks All again right. to our, our special guest, hey, Christian, guys. for joining us. Thanks All right. again for having me. It's been it's been a it's been a pleasure and, and a privilege to be here to to chat with you guys. Awesome. Hopefully we have another other other topics like this. Um, full of full of topics to talk about. We we, we haven't even spoken about. We even touched use, yes a lot. Use of of free Wi-Fi networks. Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> You're being put out there, people right now watching this, this call on some free Wi-Fi. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, wait. Let's, let's not expose the dangers of that. <laughs> we'll make sure to see you guys again next week. All right? All right. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys.